What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be playing around with the solar powered electric water heaters once again. In the last video, we hooked up the six and a half gallon Thermomate water heater to the 6000 XP. I've been using that thing for almost two months, heating that water only with solar and uh, showering on it every day. It worked really good. I was able to cut my gas usage by about half. I'll show you the screenshots of my utility bill a bit later, but uh, it's a pretty quick shower. I can only get about a five or six minute shower out of that little tank. So when the good folks at Thermomate offered me a larger tank I said yes pretty quickly and that's what today's video is going to be about so uh, I've got it over here this is the old one this is the new one we're about to get it unboxed and we'll take a look at it all right guys so here we have the new tank this is the 18 gallon 120 volt 1500 watt tank from Thermomate so uh, pretty standard looking electric water heater we have a single element over here anode in the top hole, drain valve option in the bottom, and then our cold inlet, our hot water outlet. It's kind of got a nice matte color scheme to it. Um, it's actually a really nice tank. I did a couple electric reams for a business complex recently, and the quality on them has gone way down for the price. This one is actually just a lot more solid. Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple things under the hood here that I like about it. Overall, I actually like the build quality on this a lot nicer than the ream, and it's packaged a lot nicer. You have a foam ring around the center and foam on the top and bottom. There's not a single dent or scratch on this. Almost every ream I opened for that business complex had a dent or a ding of some sort. So this thing is shipped really nicely. I'm gonna pop this cover off and show you one more little feature. Okay, so under the hood, it looks pretty standard. We've got our, uh, our thermostat, our little temperature control here. It comes set to 125. And down here we have a pretty standard 1500 watt heating element. What I do like about this is they've used the rigid foam instead of the uh, fiberglass insulation. On the reams you have to kind of peel all the fiberglass out of the way to access any of this and I don't like that. Uh, another nice thing, they've got these nice little inserts down here in the sheet metal for putting the door back on. And the door itself is just really nice and solid. Honestly, I much, much prefer this tank so far over the reams. They, uh, the build quality is just way nicer. Something like this is just a nice feature on the reams. It's just a little Phillips screw into the sheet metal and it's stripped before you even take the door off. So we're gonna be installing the tank in the same spot, but I'm gonna be cutting it into the copper over here instead of using those little service ports at the bottom. I do want to be able to drain and flush my hydronic system out here for heating the garage. Well, what I used to heat the garage with, we have the heat pump now, but I do still wanna use this occasionally. So we're gonna cut it in. I'm gonna be cutting both sides into the cold side and using this as a preheater for the tankless. So with the old one, I had it just as a dedicated heater. We would run out of water pretty quick. Wasn't the end of the world, although my wife did not really appreciate it so we're gonna use this as a preheater to the tankless so it'll use the full tank of free hot water made from solar before activating the burner on the tankless and uh, should have a pretty much endless supply of hot water I'm also gonna cut one side into the hot with a couple valves so I can have this as a dedicated hot water if I want to just leaving myself a couple different options so I'm gonna get prepping the tank and we'll start the install Okay, I've got the inlet and outlet connection started over here. I have decided this will be the position for the tank. I uh, spun this thing around a few times, trying to decide on which way would be best. I almost had this element facing the back corner because I didn't really want to plumb it up and over top of the top of the tank, but I think that will be the best way to have it in the end. I know if I put that thing facing the back, I would kick myself for that one day. So this is what I'm gonna tee into the cold line with, uh, in and out and a valve in the middle. That's gonna go kind of right here and tie across the top. And then we're also gonna come off the hot side and go into this hot side here. Like I said, just giving myself a couple different options.
Okay guys, the tank is all plumbed. We're gonna start on the electrical next, but first I'm gonna go inside the house, turn on the water, and we're gonna start filling this up and checking for leaks. All right, so far so good. I'm purging air from the service port up here on the tankless. This guy's open, so keep an eye on that. Hopefully I don't get sprayed. I might actually put a garden hose on that really quick just to be safe. All right guys, the tank is fully plumbed and primed. I've got all the air out of everything. Bleeding this heater is a bit of a process with the pump. There's a check valve, so you have to feed it from the hot side. But anyway, it's all done. Plumbing's ready. I started on the wiring. We are tied into our little sub panel here down under the stairs with the BX and right into the tank. So I'm gonna get that finished up and we should be good to fire this thing up. All right guys, everything is about finished up. I got the 15 amp breaker swapped in. BX runs straight down under the stairs to the tank. We are ready to fire up the tank. I do need to get these breakers labeled, but that is our 15 amp breaker for the water heater. So that should be coming on here in a sec. We should hear the 6,000 XP ramping up. Uh, I've got a bucket under the tank list. I'm gonna show you I can uh, still run my hot water even though there's cold water in here, this will just be cycling water through. Tankless will make hot water until this tank gets uh, fully up to temperature. And then the main part of the hot water will come from that until it runs cold. Then the tankless should kick in once again. So 6,000 XP is just ramping up. Working good. If we come over here, turn on this valve. Red light on the tankless means it's running. We are making hot water, so everything turned out pretty good. The recycling bin fits back where it belongs. Uh, I'm gonna let this tank come up to temperature and then we'll play around with it a little bit more. Okay, so while the tank is heating up, I thought I would show you the utility bills for September and October. September is on the left, and I used a total of 28 meters cubed for the month. That was an estimated bill, as you can see up above, 26,675 was the estimated meter read. And when they came to actually read the meter at the end of October, that's what the meter showed. So I did pretty good with that little six and a half gallon water heater, got uh, basically no gas usage for all of October. And I think those results are pretty promising. Even though I only saved about $10, the first $30 of the bill is all fees and delivery so they got me there but I think the results are promising I'm excited to see what we can do with the 18 gallon water heater okay guys about an hour and a half later and the tank is up to temperature not a minute too soon we're down to 18 percent battery capacity it's a pretty cloudy day we were making anywhere from 200 to 800 watts there for the most of that time and uh, we started at 31 percent so used a good chunk of the battery but we are up to temp so I'm going to show you kind of what the theory is on this tank list I just have a bucket here so I can do it all from one spot for this test I'm going to go into the diagnostic menu it is number eight. This will tell us the incoming water temperature. So right now, it's sitting at 91 degrees in the cold water inlet side. I'm gonna turn on the tap here. Hopefully we don't see the tankless turn on for uh, too much time. It should kick on just for a second and then hopefully shut itself back off as long as we are above the set temp of the tankless. So, water's on. So the red light means the burner is on. We are now sending 118 degrees into the cold water inlet. So I'm hoping this will shut off here any second. And it's not. Okay, let's try that again here. Just let the burner shut off. Water's sitting at 119 and it's set for 115. So if I turn it on again, it shouldn't kick the burner on. Yeah, there we go. So we're running 120 degree water from the 18 gallon storage tank through the tankless, coming out at 120 degrees and the burner is not firing. So looks like the theory is going to work. All right guys, it's the next day. We're finally making some good power here. I've had a couple days of just cloudy weather. So that'll be nice to get the, uh, the tank running here. So far so good, worked good overnight. It just actually turned off. It was heating up again from running the dishwasher this morning. So the tank is at 125 degrees-ish, give or take. Uh, and I just realized I can actually turn the tankless off. I can turn the 
burner off here while leaving this on so I can see the output temp. So still run the water, tankless does not fire. You can see the water temp climbing pretty quickly there. So, so far things are uh, working good. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on how this thing works over the next couple months. Back into the winter weather here, just trying to save on gas as the uh, the gas is definitely more expensive here than the hydro. So, thanks for watching. If you want to check out this water heater, I'll leave a link below as well as a discount code. You guys can get them on Amazon. Nice little water heater. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed of the uh, with the quality so far. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.